that makes router 6 in area 0. And as you can see here, our process with neighbor 2.2.2.2 on tunnel 0 went from loading to full. So now if I do a show IP OSPF neighbor, you can see here now that I have a neighbor adjacency with router 2 and router 3, whereas before it was just with router, uh, router 3. As you can see here, there's no designated router, backup designated router, because it's a tunnel interface, so there's no need for that election process and OSPF to take place. So, what does all this mean? It means that now if we go to router 5 and we do a show IP route, now you can see here that we have learned router, uh, we have learned of the uh, area 66 I'm sorry, area 6 is 66 network. So from router 5, if let's just do this on router 6. If we try to do the same ping that we did before, target IP is 555.5.5.5. The peak counts 10. We're going to source the uh, echo requests from 66.6.6.6. And as you can see now I have full IP reachability so I have IP reachability now from area 6 all the way to area 5 so this lab is now completed uh, the things to remember here is what we did with uh, the lower example area from area 6 to area 0 we pretty much ran a GRE tunnel through area 236 okay uh, that tunnel we had that IP range specific to the tunnel that we had to advertise into area zero. And we advertised it in area zero on router two and router six. And then when that came up, router six and router two established a neighbor adjacency within area zero. And then router two was then able to propagate all the routes from area six via area 0, via area 145, to area 5. So now, as you can see here, we have full IP reachability. If we go to router 5 and do a, a source ping here, the target's going to be 66.6.6.6. P count's going to be 10. Extended commands, yes. Source is going to be 55.5.5.5. And as you can see, our ping is successful, and we have full IP reachability. So again, we went through here. We did the virtual links on the top from area 5 through area 145 to area 0 on router 1. Again, with the, area, uh, with the virtual links, you got to use the router IDs which in this case were the loopback zero interfaces of the other side um, to establish the adjacency again that area uh, the, the virtual link has to be on both sides pointing pretty much towards each other um, and again the area command is like area 145 then virtual link and then the other sides loopback interface so in case router 1 It'd be area 145, virtual link 5.5.5.5. And then on router 5, it's area 145, virtual link, uh, I'm sorry, area 145, virtual link, and then 1.1.1.1, which is router 1's router, uh, OSPF router ID. On the bottom, what we did was we created a GRE tunnel from router 6 to router 2. We used the tunnel uh, IP address of 26.20. We used the tunnel IP 26.26.26.0 slash 24. Okay. And what we did here is we added the tunnel source on router 6. The tunnel source was the FA00. The tunnel destina destination was 192.168.23.2. And. Um, the tunnel IP address on router 6 was the dot 6 in this 26 network and on router 2 the tunnel source 
was the fast ethernet 01 the tunnel destination was the 192.168.36.6 IP which is this guy right here on router 6 because those both are learned via area 236 remember from router 6 and router 2 the tunnel IP address on router 2 was the dot 2 in the 26 network and then the last thing we had to do remember is we extended area 0 to router 6 so we put router 2 we put the network statement of the tunnel uh, network which is 26.26.26.0 we put that whole subnet range into area 0 and then we went on to area I'm sorry on the router 6 and we uh, added the network statement there 26.26.26.0 slash 24 and we put it also into area 0 and then we ended with sourcing uh, doing a couple of source pings and we saw now that we have full IP reachability through our network so I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed uh, this video I know this one was a little long um, but uh, we got a lot of good information out of this a lot of stuff the key points that we have to remember um, and you know who knows what they're gonna throw at you on your you know, your, your tests you know, so you might as well be prepared for everything. So I hope you guys have enjoyed these videos, and um, I hope you'll be, be with me for the next OSPF uh, lab. Uh, maybe we'll go through some external uh, summarization. We'll also go through maybe some uh, you know area OSPF area types. So thanks again for watching.